Hello and welcome to a Safer Sim webinar. Uh, we have Michael Plotnikoff here with us today from the University of Am uh, Massachusetts at Amherst, and I'm going to let him introduce his project. Take the floor, Michael. All right. Thank you for introduction. Hello, everyone. Today we have a quite unusual project. First of all, it's much shorter in scope. It basically uh, extended literature synthesis. And second, it's not about the ground transportation, which you usually see here in these presentations, but it's about air traffic control. And we'll talk about, about remote and virtual towers today. So <clears throat> many of you would wonder, what is remote tower? So probably when you travel through large airports, you see these big towers in the middle of the field, and they, they deliver a service for the airlines and uh, they route traffic around, they route traffic on the ground, and there is air traffic controllers who actually observe, monitor, and control the traffic. The remote tower operation have a tower on which you have fixed cameras, you have PTZ cameras, you have other devices which help people from remote location monitor and control traffic. So today we'll talk about the background of the problem and we'll talk about uh, remote tower benefits, we'll talk about the human factors uh, connected with remote towers, we talk about the simulator which we got here at University of Massachusetts Amherst, and then we'll talk about the research opportunities which uh, all of us will have, including graduate and undergraduate students, in relation to uh, remote tower operations and in general in aviation research. And we'll finish with uh, questions and comments as usual. So what we have here, well, we have the largest in the world um, aviation system here in the US, which has, uh, which, which serve a lot of airports and um, has about 315 federal aviation administration governed facilities. So for about almost 20,000 airports having about 315 airport facilities is doesn't doesn't look that much so the air traffic control towers are only one type of um, facilities there is also radar approach facilities there is area control and surveillance facilities there is joint control facility which operated in conjunction with the military and finally there is a tower itself so there is not many towers among all airports we have in the US. And even at large airports, we have not sufficient staffing. Part of the problem root from uh, the pandemics when a lot of uh, traffic were grounded or uh, greatly reduced and uh, during that period, also FAA stopped training controllers. But as you, as you said, we have almost 15,000 controllers in the country, and about 10,000 are going to retire soon. So this will make they, this will make situation much worse. Right now, you see on this graph, uh, while some airports, just uh, like LaGuardia Airport on the right, has uh, sufficient number of controllers they exceed the 85% safe threshold. Others, such as New York truck on facility, has just barely over 50% of the uh, required personnel. So we have challenges with control, and uh, the challenges include the cost of towers themselves, which not allow them to be built at all airports. for the part of the day and have significant number of arrivals and departures and would definitely benefit from having a tower. 
And on the top of this, we have a shortage of air traffic controllers. So now we get the concept of this uh, remote tower, which will be operated from elsewhere, maybe even from the same large airport when they do have a free time, okay? Or, or, or from facility which uh, was serving some other purpose before. And the idea was to set up traffic controllers who will help to operate traffic at those facilities which doesn't have tower, but would greatly benefit from this. So what are the benefits of this tower? Reduce accidents and travel time for, for the passengers, right? Improve operations uh, at the areas which are not clearly visible at the large airports. For example, when there is a fog, you can use some cameras to help. Uh, when there is some kind of construction on the way, which blocking part of the view, it will help. Or when you build a new airfield adjacent to the airport. Uh, uh, additional cost savings, and obviously, uh, the last but not least, is uh, air traffic controllers' efficiency and flexibility. Let's look at air traffic tower com components. Okay, so you have on the left uh, equipment located at a local airport, and on the right, what located at air traffic control tower. On the left, you have cameras which include like fixed uh, RGB typical cameras which you saw in the picture uh, before and then you have PTZ cameras which serve as binoculars which let you zoom on the object such as approaching aircraft to verify for example if uh, elements are working or if the landing tool is out or something else on the request of, of uh, of the crew. And then you have a sensor such as uh, temperature, humidity, wind sensors. You have some kind of navigation tools such as radio or light beacons. You have communication radios. And then you have area radars, which may be located at the airport, which may be located on the approach. And there are some connected, obviously, via network and preferably not a single one, but a multiple networks to the remote tower, which have uh, multiple large screens, which emulate the view from the window of the tower, as well as other equipment. So now let's take a look and think what the difference between traditional tower and the virtual one. And you can see there is a lot of similarities. For example, data channel, when all the sensors present information in digital form or semi-graphic form is the same. There is no difference. If you talk about the voice communication, also there is no difference from where pilot communicate to, to, to from, from where controller communicate to the pilot. I'm sorry, uh, that's a way. And, uh, The only difference we see it's in the visual channel when we have a cameras because typically controllers just go to the window and look outside. If they want to see something clear, they grab binoculars. Obviously, screen resolution, even though it greatly improved over the years, it's not there yet. So there is a clearer difference between uh, what you see on the screen and what you see outside in the window, assuming that you have perfect vision. So I think that clearly visual information channel, it's where all majority of human factors and technical challenges will be expected. So what kind of uh, human factors uh, you would like to investigate uh, doing a research on a remote virtual tower? It's obviously situational, uh, situational awareness, how well air traffic controller uh, see all kind of uh, all kind of traffic and uh, approaching challenges. It's alertness to different kind of events. It's uh, the scanning strategy, what it means that when you when he or she look at the window and try to find the locate uh, airplane uh, which she uh, going to control, 
um, the level of fatigue, mental workload, stress, and acceptance. Now, what kind of virtual uh, remote tower operations are proposed currently? It's a single airport, the simplest one, and uh, most widely accepted. Then you have sequential multiple airports. When you control, say, from 5 to 9 a.m. airport near GFK, and after that, or after some period, you switch into another airport in New Jersey. And then you have simultaneous multiple airports, probably the most difficult, when you have to control two airports at the same time. Then you have a contingency operation. What contingency operations? It's a large airport, which already have a tower, but for whatever reason, maybe uh, don't have enough controller to serve at night. Or you have some kind of, again, construction on the field, and you have equipment which blocking the view. Or you have some um, unexpected weather events which prevent you from viewing the field clearly. And finally, you have remote tower module. Remote tower module, it's a, basically similar, it's similar to contingency operation, except it's a permanent. So you still have a tower at the airport and uh, for to increase capacity, you get another airfield nearby. You cannot see it clearly from the existing remote tower, then you have remote tower module. Uh, and, and from the existing tower, you will be able to operate this remote airfield. Uh, interesting experiment has been done to compare single and multiple airport operations. Uh, it was uh, evaluated using uh, the dimensions of NASA TLX. Okay, it's a, it's a special tool to evaluate uh, post-experiment um, different, different types of workload on the controllers. And as you can see, mental demand, physical demand, and performance between single and multiple tower remain about the same. While temporal demand, uh, it's, it's uh, when you talk about the time stress, time pressure, the level of effort and frustration is drastically different. So that probably will be uh, a good dimensions which we would like to explore further when we will try to evaluate multiple airport operations. So what we found overall conducting literature synthesis that visual information perception is the key element that multiple airport setup will be a primary challenge. Information overload is a main factor. But we do hope that new tools and technologies, artificial intelligence assistance, and new generation air, air traffic controllers, which, well, perhaps will be trained on simulators, will be the solution. So how, for example, if you will decide to conduct experiment on remote towers, uh, how the scenario experimental of experimental design may look like? Well, we will take a single airport and we will put multiple scenarios, multiple landing, departures, taxi to the gate and back to uh, back to departure and perhaps some unexpected event fire in the engine, for example. And then we will take some seasoned air traffic controllers. This is a good experience, or retired air traffic controllers. And we can take some students just to get a statistically valid sample. You cannot take just seasonal control them from work. And, uh, and we will run an interesting experiment and see how both of those uh, types of uh, people, groups of people uh, uh, respond to the change from uh, traditional view from the tower to remote tower operations on simulator. 
what kind of measures we will we will use for to to make such evaluation we can use performance measures oh i'm sorry I it looks that i'm skip one one slide i'm sorry i go back okay uh, here on this slide i said that we will use actually human performance measures which will uh, include performance biological and subjective measures and a little bit more about this human perform performance measures I would like to say that in performance, we will use a uh, time to complete scenario, how much time it will take to run one of these scenarios or each of them or, or all of them. And then we'll take a number of errors and their severity. Obviously, the time to complete scenario, the shorter time means better performance. And with a number of errors and their severity, it's the opposite. Then we'll use some uh, biological reaction measurement tools such as eye tracking and electrocardiogram, electroencephalograms, et cetera, body temperature. Uh, and finally, we can use the same subjective questionnaires such as uh, NASA TLX, and we will uh, try to evaluate post-experiment uh, the perception of each individual on the difficulty and uh, level their satisfaction, for example. So now we come to the simulator. Okay, and that's very interesting that um, this simulator can serve as a single and very valuable tool to conduct all kinds of experiments related to remote tower. And the reasons are, well, first of all, it emulates the environment of remote tower almost exactly. Second, obviously, it do it at very reasonable cost. Okay. And final, you can train both current air, air traffic controllers and new students. And again, I expect that um, in a such an environment, new students uh, newer generation of air traffic controllers may perform actually better than those who are seasoned controllers and uh, spend most of their life operating from a regular tower. This slide just shows you a comparison between air traffic control simulator and remote tower. Remote tower is on the left. It's one of the first facilities, functional facilities here in the U.S. And uh, on the right, it's a remote tower. I'm sorry, this is a simulator at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, you can clearly see that there is very few differences except for different airports as shown on the screen. So what will be our recommendations based on the conducted literature synthesis? Um, our recommendations, it's just investigate, the possibility to use UMass Transportation Center ATC Tower simulator for human-related uh, questions that may affect performance of air traffic controllers. The next step will be develop mitigation solution for those challenges. And it is important to notice that due to complex and interdisciplinary nature of this study, we will be able to actually uh, involve a very diverse group of students and faculty from different departments, perhaps from different universities, and in collaboration with experienced air traffic controllers. Um, uh, another stuff also interesting to mention is that there is a great potential for undergraduate and graduate students to conduct aviation research right now. So, for example, uh, Airport Cooperative Research Program has a design competition which run every year and uh, undergraduate students can get a um, $3,000 prize for the first place, $2,000 for the second, and $1,000 for the third. But more important, they can get a national recognition and uh, their work can be presented at Transportation Research Board. 
those who will win the competition can do that. And um, just for those who are interested, the starting date anticipated this year is October 20, 2024 for the fall semester. For the fall semester, you will need to send a notice of intent. Uh, and uh, for January 20, January 2025 for the spring semester. And uh, May 2025 will be electronic submission deadline. And the same uh, also relate to the graduate students. They have even uh, better incentives to do it. They have up to 10 stipends, $12,000 each. And again, they will have opportunity at TRB. Um, the anticipated the 2025 an application will open and uh, draft report paper will be in July 26 and final research paper 26. And finally, here we go. Do you have any questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Michael, I don't have any questions, but if you could uh, tell us your email address in case someone who watches the video has a question, maybe they can get in contact with you that way. Oh, you froze a little bit. Is M as a Michael and then at umass.edu. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I found this very interesting. I didn't, it's much more sophisticated than I had imagined it being. So I am really glad you presented this and showed everyone um, the scale of what this does. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I also found it much more complicated than I originally thought. For example, right now we talk about complications related just human factors, but in fact, there is many other complications related to safety and security, reliability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, you can imagine, for example, during this presentation, I was really concerned that uh, my internet connection will get interrupted, right? Mm -hmm. so we will have my presentation get screwed up. But now imagine something like this happen when you operate and not single, but multiple airports. That could be a big disaster, right? Yes. And uh, needless to say that such kind of disasters are already happened in the past. And uh, air traffic control, uh, not just disasters, but even um, some kind of uh, meltdowns are pretty common thing. For mm -hmm. example, in Britain, uh, a few years ago, there was a simple meltdown, which relate to um, air traffic lane system resulted in cancellations of 2,000 flights, which is about 25% of all uh, traffic in uh, British airspace. Wow. Uh, which, which cost about 100 plus million dollars. And even though accidents didn't happen, okay, it 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 was resulting in a major major disaster because it happened during one of the holidays. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, disaster for people who were get stranded abroad as a result of the shutdown, and a major losses for air traffic uh, air traffic operations and air, air, airlines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is really significant. So there's a lot, The it sounds like the simulation tool, the simulate, um, it's a very powerful tool that could be used, but there a lot needs to be discovered about how to keep it um, 
running smoothly, how to make sure that people understand how to use it, which is a bunch of a lot of human factors and training questions. Um, and so there's a lot more work to do on how how these uh, simulate how these can be used. Um, I think this is fascinating. I am glad we had something that wasn't a driving simulator. This is awesome. Thank you very much. Okay.